Yes, everybody. Welcome back to TarHillIllustrated.com. Or, of course, if you are watching on our fast-growing YouTube channel, Tar Hill Illustrated, I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner. And joining me, as he always does, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And, AJ, we're here to kind of look back and recap the Carolina football defense. We've already hit on the offense in another podcast. If you haven't seen that one, go check that one out. Here to hit on the defense in this one. And, I mean, AJ – Pretty bad defense from Carolina this year. I'm not going to sugarcoat it or be nice or, you know, try to just, you know, make it sound better than it was. It, it just, it was a bad defense, you know, number 12 in the ACC in total defense with allowing 32.1 points per game, number 94 defense in the nation, allowing 418 yards per game in the 13 games that they played. So, yeah, I mean, it was a defense that struggled mightily. We've hit on it a lot. We've talked about it a lot. We, we've, analyzed it a lot we've tried to figure out why they haven't been good at these things and why they're bad at that and good at this or vice versa and it's been a wild year for the defense as a whole that you know I think really culminated in that performance against South Carolina where they were you know just absolutely torched by a wide receiver essentially (laughs) you know nine for nine passing from a guy who hadn't played quarterback since high school um touchdown for him it just a really bad performance that kind of culminated in the Duke's Mayo bowl. And even before that with the regular season finale in Raleigh with how that finished in the last couple of minutes. So AJ, I want to, we'll start with kind of a broad question for you, but what is your kind of thoughts on how this Carolina defense fared um, this season? Cause like I said, I think any Carolina fan watching would, would, would say it just wasn't very good. <laughs> I hope that our podcast that we did about the defense in august uh, is just dissolves you know like i might have to go delete that one. <laughs> where, the, where the tape just kind of dissolves in 10 seconds we go delete it but i don't know remember the one we did about dudes in depth yeah looking like <laughs> dummies right now <laughs> well they look good they, in spring ball that's all i'll say they look good in fall camp and spring ball they, they physically look the part but you got to play the game so yeah, you know yeah, the old all, you know, dick vitale used to do the old air the all airport team and mm-hmm. They have a they have a good look for the airport, but it sometimes you gotta you gotta apply that on the field. Yeah, you gotta get off the plane, right? The reason we said that in August was because they had ten starters back and a lot of the depth, like a year, like in twenty twenty, you had all these guys getting experience as starters, and then it was like a cavern, and then all these young dudes yeah. that were playing a lot, and a lot of the young guys were going to slide into roles and. Uh, um, they were, they were going to be a year older and, and a lot of them were going to move up and provide some depth. The staff talked a lot about how they're going to rotate. And they, and they told us throughout August that they have all this depth on defense and mm-hmm. we could play 10 deep on the defensive line and we could do this at linebacker and we could do this at corner and all that kind of stuff. So we only have one practice to see. We have to rely on that. And I'm not dogging the staff or anything like that. I'm just telling you why we said that. It's another AJ long way of getting to answer the question. Uh, so, they, they had dudes in depth, but the dudes in depth didn't materialize into anything all that special. No. They had 10 starters back. They had a lot of talent, uh, although it's young, and it needed seasoning, and it got seasoning. And we thought the defense was going to get a lot better as the season went on. It actually did get better. They were better after Wake Forest than they were before Wake Forest. But when they were bad in stretches, they were horrific. Oh, yeah. We saw that against South Carolina. We saw it the last two minutes against NC State. We saw it in the first half against Pittsburgh. And, you know, you can't be terrible for 40 or 50% of the time and win games. No. It's just not possible, especially the kind of the degree of bad that they were. An example, we've we've hit ad nauseum on the two-quarter stretches Seven different games, there were connected quarters in which they had allowed 300 or more yards. And that's pitiful. Yeah, that. And one of those games was Georgia Tech with Jeff Sims at quarterback and Jeremiah Gemmel tells us after the game, we didn't prepare for him. Did they win a game after that game? <laughs> I think they might have won uh, like they, that. They won, well, I maybe. think they – well, they played Duke after that. Yeah, Duke went winless in the league, so they beat Duke. It's just so, yeah, horrible loss for them. But go ahead. Yeah. Which Duke was probably Carolina's best defensive game, at least in points allowed. They yeah, were giving really up seven points, and that was it. And that was an eighty-yard play, yeah. by the way. Total breakdown. So even Duke exploded against Carolina, yeah. at least for that one play. But thirty-two times they allowed drives of seventy-five or more yards, and most, a lot of them were just seventy-five because, and it was after a score. Like the offense would score, and they would kick off. 
and Jonathan Kim would get a touchback. Their team would start 75, and they would roll right on down the field and respond to Carolina's score mm-hmm. with a score. Mm-hmm. If if they had to go 80, they would have gone 80. If they had to go 90, they would have gone 90. They had three scoring, they had three drives of 90 or more yards they allowed this year. Yeah. Nine of 80 or more yards. That's bad. That's doing yeah. that almost every game. Mm-hmm. With 32 of them, it's doing almost three times a game. And there, and I didn't even when I did the research, they had a couple of 73 yard drives, a 72, a 71. They had like six between 67 and 69 yards. And those are long drives too. Get yourself in score. And if you get the ball at 30 and you go 69 yards, you're at the one yard line. Mm-hmm. So the defense had some really quality stretches. You know, the, the second half, uh, the first half against Georgia Tech, the second half against Virginia Tech, you know, the second half at Pitt, I thought was the best they played all year. I thought they made some good adjustments in Raleigh. Oh, yeah. And there were times when they did make adjustments in the games and they worked. But man, when it went off the rails, it went off the rails in a big way. And ultimately, you see what you saw this year. I, you said number 94 in defense. I did a report the other day about the regression. They were number 93, so they didn't even play a game. They dropped the spot. Mm-hmm. But I think what's what's important is you had 10 starters back. You had a lot more depth. They told us they had a lot more depth. And the defense was a lot worse than last year. Mm-hmm. And that's with that's with having a really bad ACC. I mean, Duke was atrocious. Georgia State's on the schedule. Wofford's on the schedule a horrible FCS team, mm-hmm. you know, uh, uh, you got some other bad teams on the slate, just weren't very good. Florida State wasn't very good. So there were a lot of bad teams on the schedule and the defense still stunk. Yeah. The numbers, the numbers, I'm not being, you know, I know that some people might like say, well, don't say they stunk. That's not really fair. Well, the numbers suggest that they stunk. Yeah, they yeah, were it's number not an one of, They were a number 118 in the nation allowing first downs. They were number 102 in pass efficiency defense. Mm -hmm. When you have McConnell McMichael was almost a five-star corner in high school. Tony Grimes was a five-star corner. And then Storm Duck the second half of the year. Mac Brown has told us 10 times that he's a future NFL player. So if there, what's the problem if if, if that kind of pass efficiency defense is happening and you've got a bunch of really talented dudes in the back of that defense with Kelly, who was really good at times and Biggers, who was really good at times, Trey Morrison, as experienced he as he is, uh, has been. And then Conley, who didn't get hurt until Wake Forest, who's, who's NFL talent. And the wild inconsistency tells me that there is an issue either with the scheme, with the communication of the scheme, with the preparation, something along the line was an issue with this mm-hmm. team. And, and then once something went bad, nobody had a, nobody knew how to pick everything up and get it back on track. Mm-hmm. Those are problems. So the statistics tell you that they weren't very good. And then the way things occurred told you they weren't very good. And there is another stat I want to bring up too as well. And Brandon P did a piece on this that we've already run in the last three games against power five teams, Carolina was outscored 49 to nothing in the first quarter. So that's giving up 16 points in the first quarter and it's not scoring. So mm. A whole lot's been wrong. It's not just the defense, as we talked about in the offense podcast. But I ran a piece the other day, the regression of the defense, where it, it, it charts the stat rankings nationally that all these areas, you know, third down defense, fourth down defense, red zone defense, all that, and it compares 2019 to 2020 to 2021. And there's a drop-off in literally every category, but maybe one or two, which was a minor uptick, this year from last year, and they weren't the most relevant statistical areas. And all the important ones, total defense, run defense, pass defense, pass efficiency defense, scoring defense, third down, fourth down, red zone D, first down D, they dropped in all those. Yeah, they got worse, yeah. They got a lot worse. So what does that tell you? Yeah, I, you know, I could tell my daughter, my 12-year-old autistic daughter who only knows who Sam Hell is because she's heard his name in our house. She knows Mac Brown's name, but – but if they stood in front of her, she wouldn't know who the heck no they clue. are. Mm-hmm. No clue. She would understand that nothing about what the defense did this year and has done over the course of three years indicates that it is heading in the right direction. No. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run through some of those stats you hit on because you did kind of send me those. Total defense this year, Carolina sat at number 93. Going back to 2019, number 49, and last year in 2020, number 58. So – you know, in, in 2019, they allowed 300, 373 yards per game. This year, 418. Talk about run defense this year, number 97 
in run defense, 180 yards. Um, going back to 2019, number 51 at 143. Point five, so you're seeing some regression there. In 2020, they were 154.2, ranked number 50. Um, so they got better in 2020. And then no, dropped. no, they they allowed 11 more yards a game rushing, but they went up a spot in yeah. the rankings. Yeah, went up. Yeah, exactly, went up a spot in the rankings, and then this year dropped about 50 spots from where they were in 2020, and allowed about 26, so about 25, 26 more yards per game rushing, and then going to pass defense, number 83 this year. Um, at 238, going back to 2019, number 71. And, and I think these numbers culminate a lot because you would expect with the staff being around for three years that the defense would get better. Not only that, you'd expect with the talent that's incoming, we, we talk a lot about recruiting. Mac Brown talks a lot about how great recruiting's going. Got some new guys out there. You were talking about how talented they were at corner, yeah. for lack of a better word. Gets read, read, pass, read the pass efficiency defense. I think yeah. that – I, I think pass efficiency defense is a far more important stat than passing yards allowed. Yeah, and this is a wild one too. Pass the efficiency. Go go back to 2019 and then started at number 45 years. in 2019. They ranked this it's year 2020. Acceptable. Yeah, 2020 number 51. So they did drop a little bit, but this year 2021 number 102. So going back two years, it, 2019 was number 45, number 102 this year. So that's that's over double what their spot was. You know, number 45 and number 102 only two years ago in Jay Bateman's first year as defensive coordinator. Like I said, when you talk about the talent that's coming, you talk about how well recruiting's gone, you talk about guys playing in this system longer. It is a statistical fact that Carolina in basically every defensive category you can look at has gotten worse since the first year of Jay Bateman's reign. I'm not talking about him. I'm just talking about the staff as a whole. It's gotten worse. And and what's the most important step? What's the most important step? Even Larry Fedora used to tell us that all the time. Most important step is the scoreboard. Yeah. What's the most important step? Tell us what the scoring D numbers the last three years are. Let's see if I can find scoring D on here. Scoring D. What I sent you, it's right below pass efficiency. Found it. Scoring D 2021 was number 105, 32.1 points per game going back to 2020. Number 64 at 29.4. So you're talking a less, little bit less than a three point difference there. But going back to but 2019. A 40 spot difference. A 40 yeah. spot difference. Yeah. Too. And going back to 2019, 40. number 44 at just 23.7 points per game. So, like I said, 2021, 105, 32.1 points per game. Two years before that, first year for the staff, number 44, 23.7. So you're talking almost a 10 point difference in over double kind of where they ranked in those categories. So yeah. And that tells you all you need to know right there. I mean, you and let me read, let me read podcast. a couple as well. Let me <laughs> read a couple as well, real fast, because I, I think, you know, stats don't lie. We, we can take stats and kind of twist them up and stuff like that. But when they're like this, they don't lie. No, third don't. down defense, third down defense this year was number 99 and in, in 2019, it was number 46. Fourth down defense was number 89, 2019. It was 56 red zone defense was number 75. Uh, it, it, 84.3%. In 2019, it was 54. And then first downs allowed, number 118 yeah. this year, and number 47 in 2019. Brutal. That's a huge, that's just such a huge jump. And like you said, it, you know, stats don't lie in these situations. I mean, you can, no, you can look at different stats and they can be twisted to fit narratives and all that. But when you look at these, I mean, it's just gotten worse in every category. I mean, get in the podcast right now. You know what I mean? I mean, what else do you want to talk about? You know what I mean? It's, it's, it hasn't gotten any better. It's gotten progressively you know, worse. A uh, long, a, a distant politician who had very little, you know, who was known for a while, had a famous line that she brought back. It was long time famous said, you could put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. And I hate yeah. using trite sayings. I really, really do. But I'm only bringing this up because I want to make sure everybody understands it. There's no way to sugarcoat this. And yeah. it's not personal. It's no, not no. personal at all, Absolutely not. but you, you can't escape the numbers. They are what they are. And, yeah. you know, it, they, they have talent on defense. They have more talent than what the numbers would suggest. Mm-hmm. They told us throughout August that they have talent. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, I think more of the concerns were offensively because they didn't, they knew, they knew there were some issues at wide receiver. They knew there wasn't a whole lot in the running back room. But you had your offensive line back, and you know, a lot of those guys third year starters, and you had ten starters back on defense. And wow, this was this was not a good look. And I would say significant adjusting is necessary to get these guys to play at the level that you one would think that they can. And I think the fourth year of the program, 
is when you see the recruiting in the program and the yeah. player development in the program and the scheming all come to a center point mm-hmm. on both offensive defense and on special teams. We haven't hit on special teams in these two podcasts and, and I'm not going to go in depth in them right now, but the special teams, Max said, you have to have game changing plays on special teams. You have to have that ability. We've seen none of that. They lost the game in Raleigh because he got a pump block. They lost a the game a year ago in Tallahassee because he got a pump block with well, two. Two mm-hmm. of both games. So special teams hasn't won them games, but it's cost them at times. So there's a lot that needs fixing. I still think the program is heading in the right direction. There's a lot of good things happening below the surface. The class of 2022 is fantastic. Yeah, it's big but time. the class of 2023, Dean and I are going to do a podcast about how a lot of this affects the class of 2023. We They got a commitment back at the end of July when uh, Tad Hudson committed, they haven't had one since, but it's not, it's okay. It's no, no time for alarm when a 2023, no, nobody else has committed yet. They had two 22s at this time last year. So mm-hmm. we'll see here once we get into maybe May, what 2023 looks like, but the sales pitch that Mac and his staff can give changed a lot with that loss to uh, South Carolina. Yeah, they, they could have said, Hey, look, you know, we kind of took a few steps backwards, take a lot more steps forward, but Hey, we finished, we beat number 10. We took the ACC champs to overtime on the road. We beat an SEC team in a bowl game. We finished with a winning record. And that's pretty good for a highly disappointing year. That shows you good things are happening. But they cannot make that sales pitch now. They have to change what the pitch is. And when we get a chance to talk to Mac here pretty soon, we'll ask him yeah. what the pitch is. Absolutely. So, and defense is a big thing. I mean, they, they've been bringing a lot of defensive talents. That's an area that I'm not going to say was ignored by the previous administration, but it was an issue. The preview, I and mean, they were constantly changing what they were trying to do. This staff had an idea what it wanted to do, but it doesn't appear three years in that it's working very well. No, it doesn't. And like you said, stats don't lie. I think all these stats kind of illustrate pretty easily and pretty simply to understand it just the regression that the defense has seen, not not only going back to 2019, but just in the last year alone. You know, and they lose their best players. I mean, they, yeah, Jeremiah Gill and Tamon Fox were their best, most consistent players. They're gone. Trey Morrison's gone. He's a four-year starter. Kyler McMichael um, gone. Kyler McMichael's gone. So you're a little bit thin again at corner unless these young guys can step up and fill in behind Grimes, who will be a third-year guy next year. Yeah, wow, man. Yeah, so um, Rava Hasek's gone, who gave them a lot of snaps. Uh, mm. We don't know what's going to happen with Tamari Fox now. With uh, yeah. The NCAA has got to look into that supplement that he took. He could be gone. Mm. It's not looking it's, great, man. Well, I, I think that, again, if you've got parts, then it can very quickly. Look what Gene Chizik did. It's a good point. After yeah. that mess under Vic Coning, Chizik came in and – they got turnovers. They put pressure on the quarterback and voila, they went 11 in a row and they're in the ACC championship game. Mm-hmm. They were pretty good the following year. Chizik leaves and defense collapse again. Mm-hmm. Coaching is so incredibly important. You can have all the Jimmy's and Joe's in the world, but if you got them in the wrong scheme, yep. it doesn't matter. It's a great point. I know that, whoa, all you got to have is Jimmy's and Joe's. No, you got to tell the Jimmy's and the Joe's where to go. Yeah. You got to mm-hmm. tell them where to line. You could get the best 11 defensive players in the country and they're in the wrong scheme and they're projecting the wrong way in pre-snap, they're communicating the wrong way, it's not going to matter. No. So you've got to have the right scheme and coach them up. you got to have player development and all that kind of stuff. So year four is going to be fun to see where this program is in those areas. I, like I said, and I said this a few minutes ago, I still think the program heading in the right direction, but year four is pivotal huge. that they show a lot of those signs on the field on a consistent basis. Yeah. Most definitely. Most definitely. Good place to wrap this one up, Edge. A lot to hit on with the defense, and we could probably sit here and talk for another two hours about it. But, you know, it's just yeah. – if you take anything away from the podcast, I think you take take these stats away and these numbers, you can see them – I believe you can see these on uh, on our website too, right? I know you put a piece up about – Yeah, of, the re- you know, it's a headline, uh, the defensive regression is an alarming reality or something like that. It's a premium piece, so you have to pay to read it. We just gave you a lot of the stats. Yeah. So I just kind of gave it away for free. But, there, but there's more perspective in that, and we go a little deeper with the stats – Mm-hmm. Um, and just so you know, if you're a premium subscriber, you get that stuff like a long time before we talk about it on a podcast. Exactly. So. That's, that's, that's the benefits of being over there. And you can sign up for just 833 a month. If you want to do that link into the description below to head on over there and check that out. But good place to wrap this one up, AJ. Um, yeah. I think if you take anything away, it's just a bad year from the defense. It'll be interesting to see if any staff changes are made, if what happens on that side of the, the side of things, we do not know as of the time recording on this podcast. Well, we'll be yeah. interested to see. 
Be to well, see. we'll just let's just leave it at that. Let's just we're going to hold off on doing the full the look ahead because yeah, we're just until gonna we kind of see what happens because you, yeah. you would expect some looking at something. Let, let's just let's just leave it at that. We don't want to mm-hmm. <laughs> we don't want people to come back to this podcast and say, exactly. "Hey, you guys said this or that." Mm-hmm. Let's just say we're holding off to do mm-hmm. the look ahead podcast for obvious reasons. Yeah. We'll do that. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we need to. But keep it locked to TarlowIllustrated.com. If anything like that does happen, we'll obviously have it reported over there, and I'm sure we'll talk about it on a podcast at some point too. So keep it locked to TarlowIllustrated.com. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell as well so you know every single time we upload. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.